Hello, my name is Ray, and my group did our project for Math 3321, also known as Geometry, at the University of Texas at Dallas in the spring of 2019 over Simpson's theorem. My group is composed of Chow, Matthew, and I. We hope that you enjoy our video. First, an introduction to Robert Simpson. He was born in Scotland in the year 1687 and attended the University of Glasgow, which is also in Scotland. Something I found interesting about him is that his mother had 17 children, and he was the oldest of them. Anyway, let's move on to his theorem. His theorem starts with a circle around a triangle. This is a special kind of circle, and it's called a circle circle. Next, another point, designated as P, is placed on the outer edge of the circle. Following this, three lines are drawn such that they form 90 degree angles with their respective sides. PX is drawn to form a 90 degree angle with side BC, PY is drawn to form a, 90, a right angle with side AC, and finally, side AB must be extended so that line PZ forms a 90 degree angle with it as well. His theorem states that all three of these points will lie on the same line, which is called being collinear. Now, I mentioned something called a circumcircle earlier, and I'll explain what that is. The circumcircle for a triangle is the circle that touches each vertex of the triangle. It is constructed by first drawing three perpendicular bisectors. The perpendicular bisector forms a 90 degree angle with the line it touches, and it also cuts it into two equal pieces, hence the name perpendicular bisector. After these three perpendicular bisectors have been constructed, then three radii are drawn from this point in their intersection to each of the three vertices. So from there, a, a circle is then formed. The measure of an inscribed angle is equal to that, to that of half the central angle and so it must be half the arc it looks at, or subtends. This is true as the construction in this diagram shows an isosceles triangle AOB. This triangle is isosceles because OB and OA are radii, and so angle OAB is equal to angle ABO by Pons and Sonora. Given triangle ABC is isosceles triangle, so two of its sides have equal length, AC equals to BC. The base angles of an isosceles triangle are the two angles at the end of the base, and they are necessarily equal. So we call this Pons asinorum. Because these two angles are the same, angle AOB is equal to 180 degrees minus the sum of those two. Also, angle COA is equal to 180 degrees minus angle AOB. This is because they're supplementary. And so, the sum of angles OAB and OBA is equal to angle AOC. And hence, angle ABC is equal to half of arc AOC. Now, we talk about inscribed quadrilateral. Opposite angles of an inscribed quadrilateral are supplementary. Let's prove it. We know the whole circle is taken to 360 degree or 2 pi in radius. In our diagram, angle DAB equal in degrees to half arc DCB. Angle DCB equal in degree to half arc DAB. Since arc DCB plus arc DAB equals to 2 pi. So angle DAB plus angle DCB equals to half 2 pi, which is pi. That means opposite angles of an inscribed quadrilateral are supplementary. 
it is same as angle ABC plus angle ADC. Vertical angles are congruent because they both share a common side that they must be supplementary to. This means that the sum of these two angles has to, has to add up to 180 degrees. Um, and they're supplementary usually if they lie on the same line. Um, that makes it for sure supplementary. So in this case, the two bolded arcs, they're the two vertical angles. And the single not as bold arc, that's what both of them have to be supplementary to. And as you can see, since they both share a line with it, they're not the same line, but they both do share a line with it. So those two, their sum must be 180 degrees. And so hence, the vertical angles, they have to be congruent have the same measure. Now, we have all the tools we need to finally prove Simpson's theorem. First, we will draw two more lines, lines PA and PC, to assist us in this proof. Let's take the newly constructed quadrilateral BAPC. Now that we know that inscribed quadrilaterals have supplementary opposite angles, we know that angle ABC plus angle XPC plus angle XPA equal 180 degrees. Also, we know that the sum of the angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. We know this because there's a formula n minus 2 times 180 degrees. Quadrilateral has and where n is the number of sides. A quadrilateral has four sides. Hence, 4 minus 2 has 180 is 360. Anyway, we know that the angles PXB and PZB are right angles since they were drawn that way. This is known as biconstruction. So now, referring to quadrilateral BZ, PX, angle ABC, plus angle ZPA plus angle XPA equal 180 degrees. Since we know that the sum of the other two angles in the quadrilateral angle PZA and PXB are 90 degrees. Using these two facts, we can conclude that angle CPX is equal to angle ZPA. Now, we have to show that angles CPX and CYX are equal. However, this is not a problem since another circle can be drawn that uses PC as the diameter. So, this circle PC, which showed, would have a certain arc that both angle CPX and angle CYX subtend. Because of this, we know that they have the same measure according to the inscribed angle theorem. So the same manner would be used in proving that angle ZPA is equal to angle ZYA, except for it would require another circle to be drawn that has PA as the diameter. In geometry, we use a word called likewise, meaning that when a proof has many steps that are very similar, we omit some of the steps and we just say likewise because we would do the exact same thing as we just did. It keeps the proof from being too redundant and getting too boring. Um, and so that's how we're showing that these two angles are equal. Finally, since angle CYX and angle ZYA are vertical angles, they must be equal. So, since all of these angles are equal, the three points Z, Y, and X must lie on the same line, and hence, they must be collinear. And hence, the proof is complete. Now, to restate his theorem, the theorem started with a triangle and its circumcircle. Then, another point, which we designated as point P, 
was placed on the outer edge of the circle. Following this, three lines, PX, PY, and PZ, were drawn that were perpendicular to lines BC, AC, and AB upon extension, respectively. And his theorem, it states that these three points, X, Y, and Z, all must lie on the same line and hence are collinear. Finally, the last thing in our video that we'd like to do is we'd like to thank everybody that and everything that was able to make this video happen. So we'd like to start off with our wonderful our wonderful professor, Dr. Mohammed Ekbar. Then we'd like to thank Microsoft PowerPoint, of course, which we used to design all the animations and all the slides and allowed us to uh, present our material in an interesting way. Then I'd like to thank Whitman EDU's article on Simpson's Theorem uh, for they provided us with a very in-depth version of the proof, multiple proofs, so we got to choose the way that we proved it. And finally we'd like to thank our textbook, Geometry for College Students by I'm Barton Isaacs because it supplied us with definitions and proofs for not just the Circum, not just Simpson's theorem, but for the circum circle, for inscribed angles, Pons Asinorum, inscribed quadrilaterals, vertical angles, and every other uh, geometrical concept that we had in our video, it stated it in a very, very good way. Anyway, that's all. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something new.